How do we clean super yacht decks? And why do we care so much about that golden colour? Let's find out. Work on a super yacht, move up through the ranks and maximise your potential. Hello and welcome to Work on a Super Yacht. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to make the most of your time in the super yachting industry, I suggest you start by clicking that subscribe button and the bell icon to stay notified of future videos. Teak and super yachts go hand in hand. It's on the decks, furniture and cabinetry is made from it, it's in the tenders, it's down in the beach club, it's everywhere. And for good reason, it is stable, strong, easy to work with and, most importantly, very resistant to rot due to its very high oil content. When exposed to salt and sun, over time teak turns an ever darker shade of grey. This has the unfortunate consequence of making the teak look dirty, and super yacht owners and guests have come to expect that it should in fact be a beautiful golden colour. This is, of course, entirely unnatural. If you were to take a freshly cut piece of teak, such as this one, you would see that it is in fact more of an orangey brown. But golden yellow has become the expectation. And I must agree that it does look incredible, especially when paired with freshly cleaned paint, polished stainless steel, and on stairwells where the teak is at eye level as you walk up. So, how do we do it? I'm down here on the main deck aft where I have chosen this little square seating area to show you the whole process from start to finish. All of the equipment is still up in the forepeak, so we're going to need to start by heading up there to grab it. In addition, I'm going to need some washing and drying gear from the wash locker, so I'll grab that on my way back aft and I'll see you down there. Now some of this equipment you'll already have seen before, but what I really want to show you are the two-part products that we'll be using. And here they are. Step one, that's the alkaline, and its job is to bring the dirt up to the surface. Step two, that's the brightener, which is going to give you that beautiful golden colour. As you can see, both of these products have signs telling you that they do not play nicely with your skin. So, you're going to want to make sure that you're wearing protective equipment. In this case, that's going to mean gumboots and gloves. The kind you might have used whilst washing up. There are a number of different companies that make these two-part products. This is my favourite and it's made by a company called King & King, but you may also see Diam Teak and Snappy Teak. To scrub the teak, we're going to be using something called a doodle bug. It's made by a company called 3M. They come in a number of different colours. Brown, which is what I've got here, is one of the harshest. And for the larger areas, we connect it to a doodle bug holder which in turn connects to a pole. Over time, the doodle bug goes a little softer, like this, at which point I tend to cut it in half and use it to do the edges of the teak by hand. Eventually, it'll end up like this, 
at which point it's time to throw it away. We must start by clearing the area that we're going to scrub of any furniture, equipment and little fittings such as these scupper covers that could be damaged by the products if we leave them in. And now we're ready to get started. The first thing to do is to get the area wet. It's really important that neither the step one or step two products dry on the teak, so you're going to want to keep it wet throughout the job. This is why, where possible, you want to scrub teak in the shade, not in the heat of the day, with the sun beaming right down on top of it. Now we can mix up our step one. Instructions on the back of this say that for heavily soiled teak, you're going to need three parts water to one part step one. For lightly soiled teak, that could go to ten parts water to one part step one. For now, I'm going to stick with the three to one ratio. Notice how I'm mixing up the step one on the wet teak. This is because, as you'll see in a minute, when you apply step one to the teak, it starts to get to work and it actually stains it an even darker brown. You do not want it to dry on the teak like this. The only way to remove the step one alkaline is to use the step two acid as a neutralizer. It is therefore very important that you keep the step one only in the area that you're working so that you know where you need to work in the step two to neutralize it. If you decide halfway through step one that you want to maybe go to the toilet or go and grab a drink of water, you leave your gloves on, you leave your boots on, and you walk the step one all the way across the entire deck of the boat. It then dries on, and then you have step one footprints all over the boat. If you do this, you will not be the most popular member of deck crew. It also means that you need to think about where you're scrubbing. You need to do things in sequence. For example, you must start at the top with the knowledge that the step one will run down. It will run down stairwells. It will run along the camber of the deck onto lower areas. Don't go scrubbing those areas, making them look all nice and pretty, and then flooding them with step one, which will then need yet more rinsing and step two to get them looking good again. So, my advice, start an area with the step one, then use the step two, rinse everything off, clean everything off, make sure that everything is neutralized, and then move on to the next section. With all that said, I think we can get started. First off, we're gonna spread the step one around. Making sure that it doesn't dry out, we're gonna leave it for at least 10 minutes for that alkaline to really penetrate into the teak and lift up all the dirt. Only then will we start scrubbing. That way, we let the product work for us. Now we can allow the step one to start doing its work. Notice how already, even after only a few minutes, it's really starting to get to work on the teak and lift up all of that dirt. Now, while we wait, we need to make sure that nowhere is starting to dry out. If it is, you just want to give it a little sprinkle of water. You don't want to wash away the step one, but rather 
just get it a little bit more damp. Now that the step one has been sat on the teak for about 10 minutes, I'm going to start by scrubbing the main areas with the doodlebug on the pole. You may see on some bigger yachts that they have a machine. It's the sort of machine that the caretaker uses in the American high school films just to buff the floor in the school corridors. Attached to it is a big round doodlebug and it helps to really cover the big areas quickly. Before I get scrubbing, I just want to show you one last thing. Just have a look at these little fittings in the deck. They're stainless steel and they are there to attach the main deck aft tables to. Now the temptation here is to think, well, I'll just run straight over the top of them with the doodle bug. No one's going to see them anyway. They have the tables mounted on top of them. But don't do that. You're just going to scratch the stainless steel and it can make you take the same approach to more delicate items of stainless steel that will get seen and that look terrible when they've been scrubbed with doodle bug pads. Notice how when I'm scrubbing, I'm scrubbing across the grain. This is because teak is made up of hard and soft fibres. If you are to scrub with the grain, you just end up stripping out all of those soft fibres and the teak starts to get ridged and you can feel it underneath your feet. Like this, the teak won't last nearly as long as it would if you went across the grain. Make no mistake, for best results, you're going to have to scrub the teak really quite hard. But, so long as you scrub across the grain, you shouldn't damage it. Now you'll notice that I didn't scrub right up to the edges. And that is because the doodle bug will scratch the gel coat or paint if you rub it right up against it. Similarly, it will also scratch the stainless, as I was saying, so those bits Will need to be done by hand. For this then, it's a hands and knees job and you'll be needing some knee pads. And that little half piece of doodle bug. For this then, I'm using more of a circular motion to try and avoid going with the grain of the wood. Oh, and that's me, all done scrubbing the edges with the step one. As you can see, the deck remains nice and wet and we've got all of that dirt now scrubbed out of the teak running down into the scuppers. Now, this is where there are some differences of opinion in the superyachting world, because you might be taught to thoroughly rinse away all of this step one before applying step two. This, however, is against the instructions on the bottle, which in fact suggest that you apply the step two straight on top of the step one. That way, you neutralize the step one and then you wash away everything together. So that's what we're gonna do here. Now with the step two, it's very important that you don't allow it to sit on stainless steel. It's an acid and it will burn it. Then you're gonna have a real hard time trying to polish off the burn marks once you've finished. One thing I have seen quite often is that someone gets step two on their gloves and then they grab hold of a railing. The step two dries, it doesn't get rinsed in time and the railing gets a load of burn marks all over it. This stuff really is like magic. You can see that where the step two has splashed already, it's already started to neutralize the step one and brighten the teak. I've mixed up a 50-50 mix of step two and water. 
The bottle says to use it neat, but I find this is a little too harsh. I'm using a softer white doodle bug pad to apply it. Notice how I'm not scrubbing the tea with the step two, I'm just spreading it on, and the step two does all the work for me. You don't need to leave the step two on for a long time. Just a couple minutes is fine. If you leave it on too long, or you use too high of a concentration, there's a chance that it will make the seeker, that is the black join lines in the teak, start to go sticky once everything is dry. It's something that the guests will feel underneath their feet, and more than that, it can actually start to drag the seeker, so you'll end up with black marks being dragged from the seeker into the teak that you've just cleaned. Okay, that's the step two applied all over the deck. You'll notice that my step one bucket is still here on the teak. That's because now that I've step two the deck, I want to step two everything else that I used in the step one process to neutralize that step one. That way, when I move my equipment away, it's not gonna stain anything else. Now I know that everything has been step twoed. I can confidently rinse off the deck, rinse off all of my equipment, I can dry it, and I can put it anywhere else on the deck and not have to worry about it staining the deck with step one. It's important to be really thorough with your rinsing because you want to make sure that you get all of the product off. Now, I'm very happy that I can remove these gloves, which have been a nightmare trying to press the record button on this phone. And that's that, but we haven't finished yet. You'll notice that the teak has splashed up against the paintwork, and it has a habit of sticking there, even when you rinse it. So, to finish off, we need to, at a minimum, wash the lower areas where the teak has splashed up. At this point, a deck team will often use the opportunity just to brighten up the stainless steel in case it got at all burnt using a wet polish such as this one. Really easy, wet a rag, polish it on and wash it away. It's great because it doesn't stain the teak. While you're washing, it's also a good opportunity to check any areas of teak that you may have missed. You can see if you've missed it because it'll just have a slightly grey colour to it. If you have, don't worry, you don't need to repeat the whole process. The products have already been applied. All you need to do is take a clean or freshly step toed and rinsed doodlebug pad and just scrub the affected area. Now that that's done, I'm just going to dry up with my water blade, chamois and deck squeegee and then we can see just how good it really looks. Okay, so I'm all dried up and the final result looks absolutely fantastic. As you can see, it's quite an involved process. Get it wrong and you'll end up with scratched stainless steel paint and or gel coat, stained teak and burnt skin and stainless steel. But get it right and it will look incredible and be a real showstopper for your guests when they arrive on board. Right, all that's left for me to do now is to put my gear away back in the forepeak. I hope that's given you some insight into what it's going to be like scrubbing teak on board a soup yacht and if you want a real challenge try filming it on your own because that really wasn't very easy.
Okay, so I'm all dried up. You just want to... As always, any comments or questions, please drop them down in the comment section below. A like would be fantastic, a sub would be amazing, and I look forward to seeing you next time.